So guys, we are en route to the NI Young Leaders Conference. It's in Strandmellis, Belfast, and I'm super excited for this event. This is probably one of the biggest personal development events that I've spoken at this year. Now, a lot of you guys know me from just being involved in fitness and nutrition, but quite often I get pulled into other events because of a lot of the common sense that I talk about in relation to growing yourself as an individual, putting your health first, prioritizing your mindset in order to achieve success. I was nominated actually for this event. I can't wait to get there. It's going to be a hall full of Northern Ireland's future leaders, and they're going to age from eight the whole way up to 40 so it is an extremely different audience that I would normally be used to speaking to and I'm going to be speaking alongside some key names we've got Margaret Munford who is the uh, apprentice uh, TV personality Alan Sugar's right-hand woman we've got David Mead we've got Sahar Hashimi these are all top class entrepreneurs that have achieved great levels of success in everything that they've done so it's going to be extremely exciting to share the stage and keynote with these individuals and also land some great knowledge bombs and motivation bombs to everyone that's listening. The main topic today that we're going to talk about is about prioritizing health. If you haven't got your physical and mental health in order, you're not going to be a robust individual. You're not going to be able to perform to high levels and you're not going to be able to achieve and serve all your customers and clients and whatever business that you're in. So I'm really excited to meet everyone and I'm heading off to London later on this evening. So it's literally a stop by, a great presentation, and then we're back on the road over to London and I'm looking forward to that later on this evening for more business stuff. So we're gonna bring this camera with us. Stay tuned for everything that we're gonna cover and you never know, we might let you hear a few sound bites if we're allowed to. So see you soon. Uh, beavering away and squirreling quite a lot of those millions in his direction is Phil Graham. Phil has not just made a reputation for himself here but across the globe. His book that has been published recently is just about to be published next week in three more countries and beyond. He is an expert in his field and he's going to show us how we can learn from the fitness space to be the very best that we can be in all of our uh, own industries. Please welcome Phil Graham. So guys, when I got the email, the first question I asked was, do any of them lift? <laughs> Your physical health plays a massive role in allowing you to achieve success. You have to realize that some of you may not actually think how important that is whenever you go to make decisions in work, whenever you walk into a room. If you have a bad self-image of yourself because you have low energy, your physique maybe doesn't look the way you want it to look, you're not fit enough, these things are going to affect your progress. It's very important to realize there's a massive difference between fitness and health. Just because you're fit doesn't necessarily mean that you are healthy. Mars bar is a bad food. You'd hear it, you'd automatically go, that's unhealthy. The danger is in the dose and in the frequency. When you overeat Mars bars or you overeat poor quality food, that's whenever it becomes problematic. And the problem with poor quality food like Mars bars, they're very easy to overeat. Actions are very, very important and you can't take actions if you're not feeling the best. A lot of you guys will get into the mindset of working to live and not living to work. You have to realize that in order for you to enjoy your success, to actually be present in the moment, you need to embrace your health. If you want to fast track your learning and learn from other people's mistakes and lessons, read. As high performance individuals, knowledge equals opportunity, knowledge equals power, knowledge equals access. In a different environment, people think differently. So again, how you ship yourself, how you adapt to the environment you, you're in is important. And you realize that when you go to different environments that you have to think and act differently as well because their behaviors and their mindset are different too. And last but not least, the company that you keep. I divide my time into threes. People that are less successful than me, people that are equally as successful as me, and people that are more. The people that are less successful than me, they're a reminder of what I do not want to be. And they're also people that I can help. Secondly, the people that are equally successful, we share ideas, we critique. There's no real ego involved. And the people that are more successful are inspirational. So try and think of people that fit into those categories in your life right now. Thank you very, very much.
because you come in contact with a lot of people yeah. that want to start up businesses, right? Yeah, we work so, with a lot of business leaders. What would you say to them that they're listening right now? Um, I guess, you know, I would distill leadership down to sort of three areas. It's it's knowing yourself yep. and who you are, what are your values, what's driving it, why are you doing what you want to do, and being true to those, and being an authentic leader, yep. so not trying to be someone else. But also, leadership is about others. It's about developing others, so you know, always giving a hand to those coming behind, but not being afraid to ask for help yep. in your network as well. Yep. So there's an awful lot that we can learn yep. from others. And, and then the final piece is really about the vision and, yeah. and having, you know, how crystallized are you on what you're trying to achieve? And if you can um, engage other people in wanting to help you get there, yeah. I think that's that's really motivational and, yeah. and in, inspiring. And you people. talked about imitation and um, experience and that's all important as well, right? Yes, absolutely. And taking time out to just reflect and, you know, you mentioned this in your talk as well, that it's a busy, busy world. So take Taking time out to just just check in with yourself. Where, yeah. How am I doing? What are the lessons I've learned? Where are we at? And where where do I want to go? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Maybe your different. biggest lesson. Maybe your biggest life lesson. Well, I never think of those terms. You know, that's my problem. So, guys, I am here with the very famous Miss Margaret Munford. <laughs> Thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. Margaret, what would be your biggest piece of advice for young and upcoming entrepreneurs that are thinking about setting up their own gym, their own fitness business, anything in general? Well, I think anyone setting up a business, I'd say good luck to them, but they've got to look at the market, look at the competition. Where are you going to have your gym? Yep. Is it already well served? What's your USP going to be? What are you going to offer that yep. other people don't? Is it different type of equipment? Is it different hours? Are you going to be more flexible? Are yep. you going to specialize in something? Uh, do a lot of market research and ask someone whose business is successful because they know best. Thank you very much. This is Margaret Bonford. So guys, that's a wrap. We finished up a fantastic presentation and seminar at the Northern Ireland Young Leaders event. I was absolutely ecstatic to be up there, educating and impacting all the individuals in the room. We had people there from 18 years old the whole way up to just over 50 years of age that are involved in accountancy, law, finance, the whole lot. And it was very refreshing to get to talk to a different type of audience and get to hear some of their insights and experiences and struggles with growing themselves as individuals. So I know the content went down incredibly well, but now it's on with business and we are off to London. For all of you guys with diabetes, I'm gonna show you how I eat when it comes to working around seminars and traveling. So first of all, we have to consider seminars. Seminars are fairly stressful. When you take into account you're speaking in front of hundreds of people, there's preparation involved, and also sometimes the time of the day, whether that's first thing in the morning or very late in the evening, these events can increase your blood glucose levels. They're a stressful event, so just like weight training, we get an increase in cortisol, adrenaline, and all these hormones that increase heart rate and facilitate the release of glucose from your liver. Now, whenever I go to speak at these events, I'm mindful that my blood sugar can be higher than normal, and I can go into hyperglycemia. Now, it's very important that you, one, don't overreact and inject too much insulin, or you'll go hyper one stage and start talking absolute nonsense. Secondly, it's important that you don't go too high because then you'll end up like a sweaty mess and you'll be very dehydrated and you'll probably get a lot of brain fog. So what I typically do in these events is I fast. So I spoke this morning and I had no food in my system. I know what my blood glucose is sitting at and I know that there's no food coming into my system that's going to interfere with insulin or anything like that. So the event was at 11 o'clock this morning. So I was able to wake up and go straight into it and now I'm consuming my food. Now, it's very important to realize that if you're eating beforehand, you may misdose your insulin, overshoot it, and again go hypo, and again you may also underdose it, and at the same time, you'll probably build your blood glucose levels up and get a hyperglycemia because of the stress issues. Now, I'm going to get tucked into this beautiful turkey burger, and this is at one of my favorite local healthy restaurants in Northern Ireland, and I'm going to give you an insight into the macronutrient ratios of what I'm about to eat and how I inject. So, I haven't tested my blood glucose. 
for those of you that know, I've been taking my blood glucose levels for the last 12 to 14 years and I've been obsessed with the data. I check my blood glucose probably once a day because I know how I feel and I'm very intuitive with my blood glucose. And if I'm ever not sure, I will test. But at the moment, I'm definitely sitting between four and five millimoles per liter. And that's fairly low. And I know that that's gonna to start to come down now as the stress hormones wear off. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna consume this meal and I'll not inject my bowl of Sensuin for around about maybe 45 minutes after the meal because this will bring my blood glucose back up. Now, what have we got? We've got a bat. So this is gonna be around about 40 grams of carbohydrates. We've got sweet potatoes, which are around about 120 grams of sweet potatoes, so around about really, uh, just about 32 grams of carbohydrates. We have some ketchup, we have some guacamole, and then we have some chili. Now, I don't like chili, I hate chili, I hate anything with spice in it. So I'm gonna have a little bit of ketchup, which is fairly sugary, and I'm gonna have some guacamole. Now it's important to realize that there's protein, there's fat, and there's carbohydrate in this meal. So the fast acting carbohydrate source from this burger isn't going to enter my bloodstream too quickly when you take into consideration the fat on the sweet potatoes, the protein in the burger, the fat within the turkey mince. So it's gonna be a nice gradual release. Um, I will probably accommodate this with around about four to five units of Nova Rapid uh, in due course. So I've got a nice Diet Coke to flush this down. And for those of you that are asking, no, Spartaman does not cause cancer. Look at the studies, they're mostly done in rats and mice models where the doses are far too extreme to replicate in humans. The only thing you have to worry about whenever it comes to diet soft drinks is your dental health. The carbonic acid in diet soft drinks can be quite detrimental to your enamel if you don't look after your teeth. And you look, you don't look after your teeth, well, you can't really eat good quality food, you can't nourish your body, and you can't optimize your performance and recovery. So I'm gonna enjoy this and I hope that helped.